Rolling with Nat 20. I'm Nat 20. And today, we're gonna play Renowned Explorers. This is a game that I ended up just picking up in one of the various humble bundles that I buy and was pleasantly surprised by it. It is, well, the way I like to think of it, it is a single player board game. But I suppose you'll see what I mean by that. We're going to go into which one of these modes? You will be able to retry when you lose and save and load when you want. You will reach new locations faster. No, we're going to go into adventure. You can't reload to a previous situation. And if you lose, it's game over. The game automatically saves and you quit. We'll do that. I have beaten the game on normal, so we will continue trying it on class. I think I... Disables adventure achievements. Maybe I beat the game on classic before. So I don't think achievements were just. I've played a little bit of this, not too much. I've beaten it once, I've played through like three scenarios and I won once, but I wanted to share with this with you guys, because this game's cool. I like it. We'll go with classic. Uh, I don't need no tutorial for that. We got our crew selection here. We get to pick a captain. Normally, these are the four captains available, but based on experience that I have dragging the crew along to various things, the scenario in which I won, you, as you see, you get three crew people here, so I had to pick one of the captains from the original. I picked Victor, and then I got to pick two crew members from everybody else. I picked Hades and Kwame, because they got enough experience from being through a successful game, they can now be picked as captains. And I really liked both of them. I liked both of them better than Victor. Um, so if I want to be Hades, she was an excellent sniper and had a ton of survivability out in the wilderness. Whereas Kwame was my friendly diplomat who could talk me out of any situation that I couldn't shoot myself out of. We're going to go with Kiwami today. He is going to be our captain. He gets the captain perk. Kiwami will attract helpers when solving enough encounters friendly. Hmm. Actually, knowing that, anytime you enter an encounter, you can either go aggressive, diplomatic, or, or sorry, devious, or friendly. Uh... He specializes in making the encounters go friendly. I don't think that is how I want to show you the game, because though that's a really interesting portion of the game, and is a reason to keep playing, diplomacy is not the most interesting portion of the game. We're going to start off by being more aggressive. So you get 10 collect at the start of each expedition and gain 2 insight if you end an expedition with 50 or more collect. And that's kind of gamble. Insight is helpful, and I'll tell you why later. And the collects are helpful in gaining money. More stuff if you upgrade certain ways. I could sit here and explain how all of this game works, but I really think that if you just start to see it flow, it would be better. So we're just, we're just going to continue. Hatis is going to be our main person, and our main person is a scout. So we're definitely going to want a fighter, scientist, or speaker as our two others. Now, I'm interested in Dolores Garcia. Dolores Garcia is like Mucha Lucha Wrestling. Dolores, oh, we can read this. An already respected treasure hunter from Annalise, very confident of her own skill. Obsessed with gold. I added the word own and then paused. <laughs> Uh, and she's a glass cannon scout with amazing attack and speech, but very lacking defense. Hadis can hit all opponents in a line with her bow and arrows. She does great in aggressive and devious crews, as long as there is someone to protect her. Recomm recommended crew, aggressive, with Dolores and Anna. Well, fun, f funny that I just naturally picked Dolores without even reading that, because I would like Dolores, because she seems like she'd be aggressive. And that uh, hitting all opponents in a line with a bow is something she'll get upon a few levels, but is totally worth it. 
So we get Dolores Garcia. Dolores won many tournaments, but kept her identity hidden behind a mask. Now she travels the world in search of new things to punch. Dolores is a defensive fighter with great armor and decent defenses. Or decent offenses. Blah. <laughs> with either hitting or shouting, Dolores can keep opponents busy taking hits. Dolores does well in most aggressive and devious crews. Recommended to go on an aggressive or devious crew with Hana and Hot with Anna and Hatties. Well, you recommended Anna as well. Who's Anna? You are. Now you're one of the people I already have Captain with, so I don't necessarily know if I want you because I would like to kind of level a little while I'm doing this and Hatice has captain, Anna has captain, Dolores doesn't so Dolores makes that spring. Anna, maybe. I'll take a look at what she has and then compare her to other scientists. Anna's a bright and young scientist who loves the scary power of electricity more than anything. She wants to uncover the secrets of the world. She's a balanced scientist with high speech defense and no real weakness. She's capable of doing damage in an area. She does best in aggressive or devious teams, blah, 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 blah. So, are there any other of you guys who do good in devious or aggressive? Earl? And you two are toss-ups. If I want to be devious, Agatha might work out. But I probably want to be aggressive, so maybe Philip will work out. But Earl seems to be the better choice. Earl is the nephew of the renowned explorer janitor from Kansas. Has a fake membership, but everyone acts like it's real. Good with explosives. Earl is a glass cannon scientist with amazing attack and good speech, but very poor defense. So that would put all the defense on Gloria. Earl's attacks are amongst the best in renowned explorers. Earl does well in devious and aggressive teams, as long as there's someone to protect him. He's recommended to pair with Molly or Jan. Molly... Brawler Scout, Jan, Defensive, okay so his recommended team is Brawler Defense and him being Explosives. I definitely like being more aggressive so I'm totally fine with two glass cannons with my Sniper and my Explosives and having my Wrestler be their Defender. On that you'll notice here Quick Thinker 2, Quick Thinker 1, Athlete 1, Engineer 2. Those are skills that they have that will be explained later. As I will show you instead of telling you exactly how they work. <laughs> We're gonna do great! We're not gonna die out in the wilderness. So this game is divided up into expeditions and we are going to do the first expedition as episode 1 as each expedition takes a fair amount of time and I imagine that the way we'll divide this is each expedition is an episode win or lose hopefully win and ideally keep going until I win or I get bored and if I get bored then I will likely return until I have it on video that I win because I'm determined like that I'm coming back for you occult chronicles so let's see what we can do this is it! You just got your renowned Explorers International Society membership. Hatis wants to make a big entrance. Finding the burial site of the Saxon Kings. Found somewhere in the mainland of Britain, but King Egbert's grave remains a particular mystery. I pause there. Egbert's a weird name. Uh, go through the tutorial. No. No. I'll be your tutorial. I know how to adventure. So that place that just rose up is our goal. Up here is our supplies which is how many movements we have unless there's some extremity that cause a move to require more than one supply to gather things in order to gain power before we get there these are our resolve which is basically crew health and we want to not lose those because if we lose all those we lose there's a lot of other stuff going on in the AI most of it doesn't matter. Like, all of this really won't matter until, like, the beginning of episode 2 or whenever we finish up this expedition, but no, nah, that matters. No, nah, that doesn't matter. This is how we look at our crew. They have equipment, which doesn't matter. 
and we start off with 10 collect because of Hatice's bonus, meaning that we are going to immediately get 100 to 150 gold to when we re return to town, just because Hatice is our crew leader. And we really want to get up to 50 to get that extra 2 insight, because that would be helpful. Now, these gold portions are to acquire a statistic known as status, which is largely used in small upgrades to the team through followers. Over here we can get status in gold. Gold can buy us upgrades or buy us potentials for more upgrades. And over here we have a nature challenge, a witch challenge, and a treasure. Now treasures are the things that we're after. Treasures give us big bonuses forever, as well as a lot of little coin things that result in other things later. These tokens are largely what we want to gather. All of these things, all these expeditions are going to gather as tokens. Now since I'm, I want to go here, but I don't really want to, there's, we're on a small island and I don't want to waste too much movement, I'm going to go here first because I'll be able to see over here and probably go over here and definitely still be able to go over here and over here doesn't look very enticing. So I'll go over here. As you walk along the hill path you come across a crossroads. You decide to follow one of the off-road paths for a while. Here you find a lot of sideways and crossings. The paths sometimes contain ancient Saxon tools which you take with you. You eventually wind up the same crossroads as before. We got one collect from all those tools. When you arrive at the next hill, you look back at the hill with the strange paths. You are astonished to see those crossroads and sideways were actually a giant Haxon hill carving. What a sight and what a story. We get a campaign token, which will give us 10 to 15 status, which is a currency that we'll end up using to be able to upgrade ourselves in between. Um, Explorations? Expeditions. Now over here is just some gold. And I'm not too enticed by gold. Though I do want to get more gold to try to get to that 50 to get the extra insight. And I can get there from here, and here seems way better. So I'm going to go here, open up my availability to over there, and see what's going on. Halfway up a small mountain, the crew finds an old, ruinous Saxon monastery. Many of the Saxon structures were made from wood and did not stand the test of time. A stone building such as this one is a treasure in itself. Unfortunately, it does not fit in your backpack, but we can explore it. As you approach the monastery, a strange looking hooded man is standing in front of it. Well, hello there travelers. Welcome to the Saxon Monastery. I come here once a year to make some minor repairs and clean up the place a bit. Seems a bit strange that my one visit a year coincides with you visiting, but Hello! It would be a shame if such a nice place went to waste. Keep listening. Saxon men used to come here and test their skills. The most skillful would be rewarded by Tyr, the god of war. All that is left now is this heavy statue of Tyr that warriors would push and feel like a Saxon knight, and the trial in the monastery basement that would test agility and attract noblemen with petty rings. If you would like to test yourself, go ahead. Your performance might earn you something. Uh, okay, so we can test ourselves against the statue as though we're a warrior, or knowing that all these noblemen went in with all these rings and potentially lost them, we can go into the basement, or we can say, screw you hooded man, you give us a thing, you're a person. We're going to go uh, have our luchador push that statue and become a true warrior. Who pushes the statue? Dolores pushes the statue. And then we roll this wheel. It has a 70 cents, 77 percent chance of success, as we saw on that thing before, pretty quickly. That I went over not too mindfully, but there'll be many, so you'll see it later. On the first try, the statue doesn't move, but then Dolores really goes for it. The statue budges, and Dolores pushes it pretty far before stopping. Exhausted, Dolores and the crew turn to the old man, who is impressed and fetches something from the monastery see what happens we have a chance of receiving the ring that we could have gotten apparently there's a helmet that we could have gotten and we have a much higher chance of receiving this statuette of the night the man walks out of the statuette of his accent knight Tyr has rewarded you and I wish you the best 
in your travels. We will gain the Saxon Knight statuette. It gives us 25 renowned and insight and 8 collect. Go us! You thank the old man and leave the monastery behind you, carrying the new treasure with you. Great, excellent. Alright. Based on this, over here still proves nothing too useful. You want to be mindful to not run out of supplies before you get here. It doesn't kill you, but it weakens you severely. And too many turns without supplies, you might as well be dead. Too many being like two or three. Each turn without supplies gives one of your people on your team a huge debuff for the rest of the adventure. And it does seem to work out in a way that if you hit two or three turns, each debuff will hit an individual person, and each person will just become really not good at what they're doing. So you really want to mind your supplies. Now up here we can go, and there's something odd here, and there's some status in gold. There's a wits and research as well as gold. I'm going to go take a look at something odd, knowing I can walk over here if whatever's up here is not all that impressive. The rain is becoming unbearable, and the crew is looking for shelter. After searching for a while, a cave is found. Great! Some shelter! The crew lays down their backpacks and makes a fire to dry their clothes and for warmth. Once the fire is blazing, the cave appears to be larger than it appeared in the dark. As you explore the cave, you notice a lot of Saxon war equipment, including some skeletons, probably of wounded soldiers that died in the caves. We can focus on collecting valuable equipment, two collect in one campaign, or noteworthy equipment, two campaign, one collect. We haven't gone very far, and we've already gotten 20 of our 50 gold. Kind of want to go more with the collect than the campaign, being that it's one token difference either way. I'm going to go with collect. When collecting some of the equipment, you notice some tactical plans written on the cave walls. Studying this will give you tactical insight. Who will learn the tactician's defense? Well, seeing as we're all pretty noobly out here, and I really want to give my captain an advantage, and tactics does seem to fit Hatis. Hatis studies the defense tactics of the Saxons intently, and becomes skilled at defensive tactics which gives her plus one attack and three armor which is nice I, I forgot that each of these perks uh, just by unlocking one point in them gives a stat boost that's nice so it's good that down here is interesting because up here provides nothing over here provides a research opportunity and here's a research opportunity gold and wits now I do suppose that the fact that there's many things there is kind of a misnomer because we're only going to have one encounter there so it's going to be one of those things. But this is still where I'd like to go. A witch challenge is more exciting than anything else available at that move. An excavation tent is standing on a rock formation so you decide to take a look. As soon as you open the tent, a girl with a lab coat and glasses screams in horror and trembles in fear. Ah! Who are you? What are you doing here? You're here to steal my secret, aren't you? Yes, you are. Please, take some money and leave. Uh, should we take some money and leave? Or have somebody try to inquire about her secret? Everybody's chances are pretty darn low. If we just take the money and leave, we get one collect coin. Or we could press our luck and try to get a second collect coin and a research. The reward is very low. I'm going to take some money and leave. Let her assume that we were there to rob her. We weren't. Down here there's an encounter golden status. It could go down here, but... Uh, it was a fool's dream. We came, we got a lot really quick, but we got three turns left, and we're not going to be doubling this in no three turns. So, gold's out. Research is important to get early on so that you can upgrade yourself, because research gives you bigger boosts than status does. 
L largely both of them are uh, about boosting up your team, but I suppose status is about small boosts, cheap boosts that will have significance over time, and research is about big boosts. So we're gonna move here to do, to have research, and maybe an encounter, knowing that we have another movement, and if there's nothing over here, we can move here and still be able to get here in one turn. So let's do that. The crew suddenly gets ambushed by some aggressive looking men. These foreign fancy pants are going to take all of our jobs. Attack! Hatice is totally prepared. Confident characters deal more abilities with attack. Alright, so if we defeat them friendly, no bonuses. Devious, no bonuses. Aggressive, we get an encounter token which gives us status and gold, as well as potentially remount. What do we gotta deal with? It's just two hammermen, three hammermen. Okay, we gotta defeat all of them. I'm very familiar with your abilities, Hatice. You have this arrow. You can sadden people or try to encourage. And it says try because she's not very good at it. Hence the 80% uh, success rate versus the 200%. Now what's yours? Attack, enrage, or try to impress? Attack, terrify, try to encourage. We're very not friendly. We, we can only try to be friendly. So you can attack melee, you can attack ranged, you can attack ranged. Let's get you back here. You're gonna take a shot at him. Blam! Wow, did you crit or something? That did more than expected and you killed him. Cool, 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 cool. You're gonna take a shot at him. Kill him too! No, you didn't kill him. You were one off. So close. Alright, you're gonna kill him then. Surprisingly, you did the least amount of damage, and you're supposed to be the warrior. But I guess you're a defensive warrior, so you're more about taking hits than sending them out. Hey, you were supposed to hit my warrior, not my archer. Don't you know your place? Take a bullet. They get punched. Well, then walk over and punch him if there's no targets nearby. Boom! We actually get three of them. As well as you get plus five armor and attack power for this expedition. With the situation resolved, the crew can continue exploring. Earl is baffled by the fact that these men thought that the shepherding or mining was of any interest to you. And Dolores has gotten enough experience to level up because I made her do that, uh... I don't remember what it was. I made her do some sort of thing by herself that they decided. Whatever that spin roll was for, I guess, must have been on her. So I will gain Primal Roar as an ability in battle. And I can either take Quick Thinking, Escape Artist, or Athletic Tenacious. Now knowing that I can have you, Hatice, upgrading as, as uh, Quick Thinking, and knowing I can have Earl upgrading as Engineer, meaning that I will have, want to have Hatis over uh, as Quick Thinking over as Engineer, I want to have you as Athlete over Quick Thinking. So Athlete it is. Hooray. Now, an encounter and research is a bit more interesting as well as uncovering more because we could find something incredibly cool that's totally worth taking the penalty for. So we'll go this way, even though that we could discover there. Encounter's better. Ooh, supplies. That means we could just continue exploring. Nice. A group of sheep is fighting to eat from a slightly greener patch of grass. It might be interesting to study this particular gra patch of grass. Let's not fight these sheep over some grass. No, let's fight them over grass. You approach the patch of grass, but sheep see you as competition and start attacking. So we will show our worth. 
we get a lot of research bonuses if we do this either deviously or diplomatically. So with our team, we're going to do it deviously. Primal War is a devious power. And it allows... It's an area of effect. Okay. I want you to move there. And I want you to move here. And I want you to Primal Roar. Roar! Yep. You just scared three sheep with that roar so hard they don't want to fight us no more. And let's just make this sheep sad that all his friends left him. You're like a bent arrow. All of your friends left you. I'm not good at analogies. I'm just mean. You get two encounter tokens and three research. Hatties gets grit, which is good for a scout, and speech power. You specifically or you successfully calm down the sheep and can finally take a look at the grass. After carefully examining after careful examination and some tests, it seems the grasses contain some special nutrients that attract the sheep. You take some with you for their scientific value and gain another study. I misspoke a lot during that. Alright, Hachis, ah, you're my quick thinker. I explained before why. Become nimble, get your piercing shot. You, however, are my engineer, I believe. You can become a naturalist a little bit, a survivalist. Uh, but engineer is what you're here for. So that's what you get to upgrade. We're going here to get these supplies, because supplies are always worth it. Normally you wouldn't be so excited about this, but you found an abandoned farm. The fields are overgrown with vegetables and even fruit trees. We take some to restock your supplies. We get three more, so we can one, two, three. Yeah. Unexplored over here. This is a uh, person. I wish I would hovered over it, because I don't even remember. I think it means that we have a chance to uh, have an upgrade to one of our characters. Two people are having a heated discussion as you walk by. One of them yells, Hey you! Yes, you! We need your opinion on something! We are discussing what hap what is the best way to solve problems. I am convinced that using speech will solve any problem that you encounter. But this guy here thinks that physical attacks is the way to go. So what do you think? If you choose me, I'll teach you how to use speech more effectively on the silence. If you choose him, he'll do the same for attack. Well, we're gonna go for attack, cause, uh, we're pretty aggressive. Excellent choice! Attack is always the better option. I'll teach one of you to how to use attack more effectively on this island. Might be the other dude in that conversation. But they're from the same island, so they'd have the same, like, dialect. I don't know. These secrets only affect this expedition. Increases Hatice's attack. Hatis learns about the histories and customs of this island, which will be very useful during challenges on this expedition. They will be useless on other expeditions, though. Alright, let's go over here and deal with uh, gold status nature. You encounter a group of Highlanders sweating and breathing heavily. One of them who entered other who uh, one of them, who the others call Coach, speaks. Hey there! We're the local rugby team. We're trying to increase our stamina. By jogging. We were just about to do some tackle drills. Why don't you join us and show us what you got? Dolores has a hundred percent chance. Why not? Dolores tackles the rugby player as if they weren't even there. Eventually, even three of them try to tackle Dolores at once, but Dolores keeps standing strong. After the training's over, the coach shows great appreciation. That was the best performance I've ever seen! This will go down in history as the best training ever. Too bad we can't add you to our team. Alright. Got a bunch of stuff from that. One more supply gets us here. I 
I kind of want to go here because you get penalized at the end of the turn. So if we went here, we do the thing, we take our supply. Then we go here, we do the thing, we're out of supplies, but it's happy we finished the goal. So let's go here. What a strange music is coming from the meadow. But there is no one in sight. It seems that the wind, in combination with some strange type of twin flowers, making the noise. You listen for a while to the beautiful note and make note of the phenomena. You are at us. Oh, I remembered wrong. Damn it. Earl becomes frustrated and loses speech defense. Let's go in there. We're going in. The burial site of the Saxon kings must be somewhere around here. Once you get there, the expedition will come to an end. You can come back to the place if you wish to go further. Are you ready? Yeah, we're out of supplies. We gotta go now. The crew searches through the hills and quickly finds what they were searching for. The Saxon burial site. One of the tombs is of King Egbert, a particularly mysterious figure. Finding his secrets will surely skyrocket your reputation at the renowned explorers. However, you hear a familiar laughter. <laughs> Behind you stands the French explorer Rivalx. Rivel. Hmm, I don't know too much about French, but L E U O in French, to my knowledge, makes like an E O sound, like Bordeaux. So I'm gonna go with Rivel. Let's call him Rufio. Sounds fun. Behind you stands the French explorer Rufio, who is considered to be the most promising of the renowned explorers. He speaks. Thank you, Amateurs. Under Rule 24B of the Explorer Mandate, fellow explorers should help each other out. And I really need to activate King Egbert's tomb to gain another honorary title. Explain how you worked hard for this treasure. Rufio, Rufio continues. It seems my explanation wasn't clear enough. Maybe my strong friend Tommy can explain the situation better while I plunder King Egbert's tomb. Hey, wait a minute. Before Hattis can stop Rufio, his crew fighter Tommy steps forward. Nuh-uh, little explorers, beat it. He's not going to let you pass. Defend yourself. This is how every tutorial goes. You, end, you meet Rufio. You gotta kick his team's butt with what your team's most suitable with, which is aggression. We will get uh, bonuses if he's impressed by our skill. Now that I think of it, the skull and cross, the skull faced has made me not want to do this, but I don't actually know what happens if Tommy is emotionally hurt and leaves. But in this situation, all we gotta beat is Tammy. We get this experimentation attack for him, which affects a range, and it can hurt a good amount of people. So let's walk around these dudes, drop it on them, hurt those guys, and get a good whip at the boss. Now your piercing shot cannot be used when standing next to an enemy. But if we move right here, where you're not next to an enemy, it should be good enough for us to knock out one of these guys and hurt you, Tommy. <laughs> Blammo! Yeah. Alright, you, however, your special ability is a shout. Now, this ability has increased aggro, and I want people to focus you. Oh man, that shouts all around you. I forgot. Maybe we'll just punch you and kill you. Unless you get surrounded. Well, we took out two of you dudes, men. Weakened one, weakened you, Tommy. Your turn. Ooh, my face! With a hammer. At least you're not focused firing, and you're missing. Good job. Hey now. Not cool. Alright, alright. 
I'm coming over here. I'm doing this area of effect. And I'm getting rid of these guys. They're gone. They're too terrified of me to fight anymore. You. Running behind Tommy. Away from these two cronies. You're yeah, shooting him with an arrow. Boom! Because we're killing him aggressive. You can tell how your fight's going based on up here. Actually, right now we're doing devious because of how many people we scared away. So we must make at least three aggressive actions before we are considered aggressive again. So, an arrow shot, a bullet. And then the next action I take needs to be aggressive, otherwise we're considered devious. Now, us being considered devious versus them being aggressive gives us a bonus of 25 grit, and every situation gives different bonuses. I don't know them off the top of my head, but you can use them to your advantage, and that's the sort of high-level play that allows you to play the hardest difficulty. Alright, one more aggressive will push us into aggressive, but just because of where we're at, I'm going to punch you, because I don't know wh if it will count it immediately. And that puts us in hostile, devious abilities get 25% extra attack power, which is kind of cool. You are going to watch Hadis shoot this guy down. Boom, he's done. We win. We are the greatest. Tommy is impressed by your skill. You gain two encounters, and Hatis gets five armor and two attack power for this expedition, which is now over, so it doesn't matter. Wow! You're pretty strong. Few people can take the mighty Tommy gun. Take some gold in this checklist. It describes treasures that we want to find here. I guess if you beat us to it, uh, you deserve one as well. And he leaves the fellow... He leaves to follow Rufio, who has already plundered King Ebert's tomb and left. We are a band of white team warriors! Huzzah! To collect and everybody gets plus one attack permanently. Nice. The crew quickly turns to the mysterious checklist you got from the encounter. It seems to be some sort of agenda or scheme. Hatis takes it and reads it out loud. Treasures still to grab. One hidden in the tomb of the Forgotten King. That one treasure held by the locals. The one in the cache nearby the dangerous cliff. Due, due date today. It seems Rufio was going to nab more treasures. You might be able to get one before him. Which treasure are you going to go after? We're not diplomatic. We're scary, so we might be able to scare locals into giving us stuff. But we're going to go danger. You surely are faster and tougher explorer than Rufio. Maybe you can beat him to exploring the dangerous cliffs. Who will lead and take the big risks? Well, Dolores can do it without fail, so she will. Searching every cliff of the, <laughs> searching every edge of the cliffs was no easy task. But you did it! Dolores was the one to find hidden cash at the bottom of the cliff mentioned on the secret checklist. Flowed with gold, and there's a particular treasure. Most likely going to be the horse, but chances are it could be the so the sword or the helidor. What do we get? Horse. 50 renown, two more insight, but we're maxed out. Plus one collect when you enter a technique challenge for the first time, and 10 campaign. So that's what you want from the treasures, like those permanent things. Every time I enter a technique from now on with this team, I get plus one collect. With this last find, your expedition still concludes on a high note. However, it's clear that you want to be the most renowned explorer. That if you want to be the most renowned explorer, you will have to beat Root Feet. Oh. Now it's personal. Go back to London. And with this and the final screen, we're going to end this episode and we'll start the next one up back in London. Much like when we built the characters and go on another expedition. Hopefully we succeed. It takes five or six to win the game. But we're going to go back. We didn't quite hit that 50 mark. Oh well. We're going to go back with a fair bit of money. Decent amount of status. 
near no research, which is unfortunate. And the Renowned is the ultimate pointage of the games. You can't really use it for anything, but like on the leaderboards, that's the point system that matters. These other things all fall into Renowned a little bit. As you see, we got 35 Renowned from this, 10 Renowned from that, 5 from that, 15 from here. Renowned is really your ultimate point, your high score. The number that doesn't matter, but you like seeing go up. Or, I guess, does matter if you're like, if you get good at this game and really test yourself. High scores is where you're really gonna find your test. But for my level, I just wanna survive. So, renowned is nice, but doesn't matter. Anyway, see you guys next episode.